Lost at Sea is a haunting walk down memory lane as you explore a serene island, but there are shadows, both literal and metaphorical, lying beneath the surface here as well. As your character Anna deals with the pain of loss and questions her life decisions, my only question is, does this walking simulator have enough to keep you interested? Hey guys, it's Cody with Indie Game Pulse. If you want to find the newest and best indie games and hear genuine reviews from an indie game fanatic like yourself, click subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss another video. Let's get right into it. Thank you to the folks at Head Up Games for sending a review code my way. For starters, Lost at Sea is a first-person, narrative-driven walking simulator where you explore a landscape filled with memories from different points in Anna's life. In each of the five memoryscapes, there are four specific memories to be found, and once found, you must search out the corresponding item around the island, and then return to the memoryscape to unlock the full memory. Once each memoryscape is complete, you will then follow a glowing light to the center of the island where it will chip away at the surrounding darkness. And then it's on to the next memoryscape, or at least that's the way I played. Really, you could visit all of the memoryscapes first and then go on a massive scavenger hunt to find all of the items if you wanted. Thankfully, you're not just searching around with flimsy hints, but you're carrying a compass that you can turn and tune to whichever item you're searching for. But as you can probably tell, there is a lot of walking time in Lost at Sea. Time to wander and enjoy the soothing sounds of the wind and the waterfalls, and time to ponder what items you'll find and what meaning they hold to Anna. This type of slow gameplay is not for everyone, and at times I got a little frustrated with how long it took me to walk slash jog to each item and then return to the memoryscape. Whenever you are walking around the island, except for when you're safe in your memoryscapes, from time to time a darkness will take hold of the island and try to take hold of you, but by turning and facing it, you will expel it. Upon finding each item, there is most often a short puzzle to solve before you're granted the item, but I don't know that I would consider these puzzles, or even mini-games. There is very little to solve, and some of them repeat mechanics from earlier puzzles that you've already solved, so I found this part of the gameplay lacking. However, I think these puzzles were made with intention to not focus on difficulty or blocking the story from being discovered, but to help you visualize the full story of each item. You see, for one puzzle, you have to walk down the beach avoiding obstacles, small brick walls that stand in your way. But something's off, the footprints are beside you because you're walking beside your husband. Or another puzzle where you have to climb a structure by the sea and jump off into the water, unlocking a memory and being granted the swim trunks. It's hard for me to talk about a game like this that is so dependent on the story, since if I give everything away, there really isn't much reason for you to play it. So I'll tell you what it means to me. The day that I played Lost at Sea, I found out that morning that a distant relative of mine had passed away. They were around 10 years older than me, but that's the headspace I was in while playing. As I'm exploring the island and enjoying the scenery, I'm missing time I could spend with my wife, my dog, my family, for the sake of work. At the same time, my work, playing this game, is making me unravel the thoughts and difficult memories of Anna, who is also dealing with loss, coping with aging and the different stages of life, and honestly, it pushed me to tears. This sea is shallow here in terms of gameplay, but the catharsis is deep, and at times a game like this can be just what you need to renew your drive and purpose. Before I make my recommendations about Lost at Sea, the art deserves to be mentioned. Walking around under the hot sun, the tropical trees and grassy hills take on a sun-kissed look, with some salt in the air occasionally visible on the edges of your view. I love the way the sunlight dapples through the leaves on the tree and casts rays across your vision. There are some picturesque moments from playing the game that are still in my memory as I'm writing this review a couple days later. Contrast this with the flat 2D paintings depicting Anna's life and memories using harsh lines and shadows to create contrast to the bright and vibrant world outside. But every rose has its thorn, and occasionally you'll come across things that seem overlooked or like they are missing some attention to detail. Like this waterfall that looks like it's running out of an inflow pipe at a wastewater treatment plant, just discolored and tube-shaped. And the water always looks choppy, likely as a result of the game frequently running at between 30 to 40 FPS, even on the lowest graphical setting, which is strangely called medium. I was playing on a PC with a Ryzen 3600 CPU and RX 580 graphics card, and compared to my recent time playing Hellblade on medium to high settings, Lost at Sea suffers a lot. 
There are no other graphical options to toggle, just the screen mode, display resolution, V-Sync, and the all-encompassing graphics options. I was playing a pre-launch version of the game, so the publisher head up has stated that a few last changes and technological advancements are coming prior to launch, so hopefully this will clear up any frame rate issues going forward. So the question is, should you play Lost at Sea? I am on the fence with this one, so let me know in the comments below what you think. On one hand, it is a deeply thoughtful game that will surely lead to plenty of personal introspection and empathy for others. Lost at Sea dives headfirst into an ocean of memories, a lifetime of love and hurt, and shows us Anna, a woman struggling to come up for air and find purpose in her life. And I don't know how to feel. I just don't. I'm lost. Limping. Barely hanging on. On the other hand, it is a game which took me about two hours to complete, and I can confidently say that one and a half of those hours were spent walking. If this isn't your style, it's probably best to walk away. Thank you very much to my 1,170 subscribers for your support. If you like what you see here at Indie Game Pulse, join us on Discord and consider helping us grow by supporting us on Patreon. Links are in the description. For more top indie game countdowns and reviews, check out the videos on your screen now, and I'll see you on the other side.